Hi guys, welcome to my channel and welcome to today's video. Welcome back if you've been here before and welcome if you're new. My name is Kaylin and if you did not know, I have an autoimmune uh, disorder called alopecia areata where my hair does not grow. So if you don't know what that is, you can go back to my very first video I ever posted where I talk about what that is. Um, but my guess is if you clicked on this video, you maybe you have it as well and you wear wigs or you just enjoy wearing wigs and you want to learn how to remove some density out of a wefted cap. I do like to make cleaning, decorating, organizing videos on my channel as well, but as promised to my alopecia crew, I do still want to make some alopecia wig related videos, so that's what I have today. So if you saw the title, you already know that in today's video I'm going to talk about removing density out of a wefted cap. What I have here is a Zara by John Renault, and I already have her secured. You can't see it, but she's secured to my canvas wig head. And we're kind of just going to get right into it. I apologize for the shadows. Um, this is a quiet room in my house, but the lighting isn't the best, but I think we can make do and you'll still be able to see uh, what I'm doing. So before we get started, I just want to touch upon again that this is specifically for a wefted cap. Um, how to remove density. So if you're going to do this, there are a few tools that you need. So obviously you'll have your, your wefted cap wig, um, a canvas block head or something to secure your wig to. Uh, you'll need some clips. You'll want a comb. Obviously you'll want your T-pins, um, these little guys that you, you see that you use to secure it to your canvas head. And you will need some texturizing shears. So they look like this. Get that to focus. This is what you will use for uh, removing the density out of your hairpiece. One of the first things I want to say too is if this is not something you are comfortable with, always refer to an alternative hair specialist. You don't have to do any of this stuff at home if you're not comfortable with it or if you would prefer not to um, do it yourself, which is completely understandable. But it is a pretty straightforward process, so if you are interested in trying it at home, then you should just keep watching. So removing some density out of your wig is a completely personal, you know, customizable thing. Some wigs um, you may not feel like you need to, some wigs you may, and it really will depend on the style. Um, some wigs just naturally appear more dense than others. For example, this Zara being a darker hair piece, so darker um, fibers actually absorb the light and they appear more dense than... Um, a lighter hair piece. For example, I have a Mila over here and I have her in the color uh, 24B22. As you can see, she's much lighter. They actually reflect the light. So they can be the same density as a darker piece, but they can appear kind of lighter, more airy. Um, they can also appear, appear denser just because of the styling. Maybe there's some built-in curl um, or some permatease, something that is making the wig appear more dense in a certain area than you would like on yourself. You might want to remove density because you it came with the middle part and you want to do a side part and then you feel like the side where you've moved more hair to sits higher than you want or you just want it to lay a little flatter and smoother. That could be a reason you want to remove density. Um, so lots of reasons, like I said, it's totally a personal thing. But if you find yourself in that situation, this is what you would want to do. So. You would start, like I said earlier, by securing your wig to your canvas head. You're going to expose the wefts in the back, as you can see, like I did here. I hope you can see. Okay, I know it's a uh, darker material on a black uh, canvas head, so I hope you can see. Maybe we'll zoom in. So as you can see, even though now you can't see me, I've exposed the wefts. And you want to really stay in this this kind of area right here, which is kind of where the, the curvature of your head is it's called the parietal ridge and the reason you want to you don't really want to go much higher than this is because if you do a lot of synthetic wefted pieces have permities and so if you go too high and you start thinning it and taking out hair you might actually start to expose the permities which basically will just you'll have like little spikes of hair that are exposed at the top of your wig and we don't really want that so it's kind of why you try to not get too much into that permatease stay in that parietal ridge area and you know below so once you've exposed your wefts you can pretty much just get started so what you want to do this is why you want like a nice fine tooth kind of comb like this I'm gonna zoom in for this part so 
But if I'm going to start with this one right here, you want to grab the hair. As you can see, so I've grabbed one section right here. Can you see that? It's kind of hard to see. And you stay between the base materials. Then you want to stay about an inch away from your base materials. Let's see, I'm going to turn that a little bit. And you've got your hair. You've got your shears. So you're going to go ahead and go in and cut, close completely, open, pull away. And you can see there's what I just removed. So again, one whip at a time, stay about an inch away and you're good. So we just did this section right here. So what you're gonna do to for even distribution across your wig, you're gonna skip this next section and then you would move on to this section right here. Can you see that okay? And we'll do the same thing. Go about an inch away. Close, open. There you go. So as you can see, it removes a decent amount, but also not too much at the same time to help keep you from getting a little too scissor happy. <laughs> Maybe removing more than you had intended. You basically just do that bricklay pattern. So you alternate wefts to get the desired look that you want. Now, if you decided you wanted to go downward and do more than one row, you would basically, you skip a row. So we're going to expose that next row of wefts. So this is the row that we just cut. So we're gonna take the row that we cut, pull it up, then you're not going to cut the row directly beneath it. You're gonna grab that row too. So just like you skip the sections of the wefts, you're also gonna skip a row just to allow for ah it won't let me grab let's clip this up first for even distribution so we pulled up the row that we cut we're gonna skip this row Pin it up, and now if you want to do more on this row, which I'm not gonna do at this time, but you wanna do alternate um, sections from what you did up here. So if we did this one, we cut on this one up above, we're gonna skip that one and cut here, and then skip this one and cut here. So just like you alternate the rows, you alternate the sections for kind of that brick lay pattern. So hopefully that makes sense. So a couple of things I wanna end with is just to remember, don't get, what I said earlier, too scissor happy. You don't wanna to remove too much because then you can't put it back. So although it's you know kind of annoying to have to unpin the wig, put it on, repin it if you wanna do more, I would really suggest like less is more at first, do what you can or do what you think you wanna do at first, put it on, see how it looks before you go ahead and do more um, and just do little bits at a time. So like I said earlier, this is specifically to remove density on a wefted cap. You do not wanna use this technique on a monofilament top. If you were to want to customize you know, your part on the monofilament top or something like that, you would refer to um, the video that I did about customizing your lace front, which actually involves removing the knots with like a little razor, a facial razor. If you are curious about that, I would go a few videos back and I can link it below. I'm gonna talk about that. So this is specifically a technique for the wefted base area of your piece. And also just to add, if you do find yourself wanting to remove 
a lot, I would start to kind of consider why are you wanting to remove so much. At that point, it might just be that this specific piece and this style is not for you. Maybe you don't like the way that the style frames your face. You don't like the way the silhouette looks from the side. It might just be that you need a whole different piece um, with a different density, different style, maybe a different color, just different piece altogether. So if you find yourself wanting to remove a lot and completely just recustomize and change the piece, you might just wanna consider a different style at that point. And just a reminder, like I said earlier, stay in that parietal ridge section. So right around the biggest curvature of the head, you don't wanna to go too high towards the permatease um, because you could start to expose that permatease. But you can do this on the side, either side or the back of the wig. So as you saw, it is a pretty simple technique. Just you need to keep a few things in mind before you'd maybe try it yourself and with you know a few things considered um you can really customize your piece to your liking so i hope that all made sense i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you have any questions or there's something that i just didn't cover or explain all the way please leave it down below and i'll be happy to try to get an answer for you like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video thank you so much for watching and i hope to see you on my next video bye